Thank you, Dimitri. Please put your hands together and welcome to the stage our international cosplayers, Sakura Floor and Harvey. All right, here we go. I know it's interesting. So, uh, so here we are. Like the first time we met on stage, you had no idea who I was, and now we're like lifelong friends. Here at camp, here at camp uh, Comic Con, South Africa. Uh, See so y'all and have a fantastic time. I mean, honestly, being here has just been, like, honestly, it's, it's like a home now. Uh, South Africa has become this, like, yeah, I don't know. The community is everything, and you guys have just, like, absorbed this into it, and we're so lucky to be here, so thank you guys. It's been, it's been great. In all honesty, I was saying as well, it's one of the greatest community. We feel so at home, and it's just, it's fantastic. All right, who are you cosplaying as today? <laughs> well... For once, myself, which is the hardest cosplay I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, also myself. <laughs> okay. <No way. laughs> what are you cosplaying today? Uh, I'm cosplaying as DJ Elliot. Um, dude. Well, I'm not actually DJ Elliot. I'm actually, I know it's hard to believe my name is actually just Elliot. Just I know Shocker. Oh. Shocker. I know it's a huge shock. Okay. People have no idea. So uh, what, what are some things that you've learned this past weekend? One of the things that I've learned is that um, we need to step up our game in the rest of the world because South Africa is about to dominate. That's what I've learned. <laughs> Honestly, this, this place has more talent than like, you guys can even take. Like, it's, it's unreal. Like When we come go uh, around the world and we see different events and we have the awesome opportunities to do what we do, like, you know how it is. You get to yeah. see the world and you, you get to see so many amazing people. But um, a lot of that talent sometimes is hidden, and South Africa is honestly hiding some crazy talent, and I don't think the world is ready for that eruption of talent from out of South Africa. Correct, correct. Um, so you were part of our judging process for our, our cosplay uh, championship today. Uh, why did you pick our winner? Ooh, um, I mean, it was an absolute war room. Uh, and there, like everybody, like had. They, I mean, every person that showed up there was so talented. But um, honestly, the, the the cosplayer that won was just. There was not a single thing wrong with her costume, and um, we spotted nothing wrong with it. Like there, there was very few things that you see, uh, like as a as a judge, and you go, yo, this is spotless. This is like absolutely pristine. But down to every single little seam, it was perfect. Like, there were so many different techniques used, like, we'd never seen that many techniques used. I mean, Sophie, you're, you're more of a crafter than I am. Like, <laughs> it was the techniques, it was the way it was executed, it was as if we had the best pro in front of us. We literally tried to nitpick it, and I couldn't find a single thing that was wrong with it. It was absolutely amazing. We played the Uno reverse card where we started to nitpick ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then, of course, you have to look at it from the lens of the lens that I always remind everybody to look at is, you know, we have unlimited resources in the United States. I can be like, oh man, I need some warm love, and I can go on Amazon at 8 o'clock in the morning and have it on my doorstep by 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And from what I was told, there was, there was only one place in South Africa to get warm love. And you know it may or may not be in stock, so you may just you know be out of luck. It's scary because with less resources, still like I, honestly, we can like when I'm in the US, we can go down to Walmart and yeah. it has everything. Like you go and get EVA phone. If it's not Walmart, go hit Target. Like same as the Netherlands, we have Action, we have a Costa. Okay, shop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but we have access to Centrum, so, yeah. but instead here they use metal. I know. It's insane. Like, I've not seen, like, I think worldwide, only one or two cosplayers worldwide that worked on metal, and they were metal smiths, or that's how you call it, I believe, right? Yeah. But, like, here, like, we had several people, and they're like, I never worked with metal before, but now I have an entire costume. I'm like, huh? I mean, Tiger was a prime example. You guys may have seen the guy in the samurai, looks really cool. Um, his suit was 
completely, like every single piece of armor was made from metal or the exact material that they made um, in out of in like the older days. So it was like, and it was all sourced from South Africa. So it's not something that you can go and go to a shop and buy or anything like that. It's it's all materials and um, that are found, uh, ordered online, or even like self guided or self made. It's it's crazy. And he even wore his grandfather's gloves. Yeah, this is crazy. So the guy's uh, <laughs> grandfather was a Templar. All right, right. And he had the gloves of his grandpa. Uh, grandpa. He was wearing the gloves um, while like wearing all this samurai armor. Yeah. He, the amount of education this guy gave us was, was just crazy. That's awesome. And that's that's really the cool thing about cosplay is you know you get to dive into something that you're super passionate about, and then you start diving down that rabbit hole, and it's just a never-ending. You know, you're like, all right, so this is good good enough for now until I can find exactly what I'm looking for. You know, I've. I've driven across three states to get the perfect part for the prop that I've been building. So like it's it's really cool. So what what are you gonna take away from this experience? Like is there anything that you saw from cosplayers here that made you think this is something I might want to try? Well, I mean honestly the rest of the world needs to start stepping up. I, mean, <laughs> but, uh, I think also no, I mean, is there anything personally that, okay, okay. that you thought to yourself, oh wow, like I've never seen someone do metal before. I wonder if that's something I could do. I think, about, well, not only, like, I want to take it away from the crafting for a second, you can go on that side, but I want to, what I want to take away from here is the love they have for each other, the support within the community. There is no hate. Even though it's a competition, they will support each other, and that is something that we're missing in a lot of the communities, and that's something that I really take away, that I hope we can teach our communities as well. It's epic, like it really is. Like we, we stood behind and we saw the camaraderie between every single person backstage, and there are very few competitions which don't get nitty gritty, and um, South Africa has this community like no other. No, I'll agree with you. I, I think, and you know, it's something that you know maybe maybe I might have a little bit to do with. Maybe I don't know, but. That whole like, all right, cool. Let's come together as a community and let's beat everybody else. You know, like, like your, co you know, I worked forever on this cosplay. It's amazing. No one thinks, hey, I should win. It's like, you no, know, you're the person that's gonna go and beat everybody else. And I mean, those. I'll, I'll be honest. As someone that should, that was at the first two competitions that you all placed first in, like, it wasn't even close. When Jinxie won the first year, she beat everybody by 50 points, which was unheard of. Like legit cosplayers backstage were like, yo, we gotta, we gotta step it up. We were literally saying that yesterday yeah. when um, we saw all of the competition, we were like, you know what, and especially today after knowing who won, we said, we will be proud if South Africa wins the whole thing. Like, we will be proud with you guys because the absolute talent, <laughs> It's, it's unreal. Like it, as judges, we learn so much here. Like, we never planned to use metal. Yeah. Now we want to go and try blacksmith things. Yeah, why not? So that's a, it's, 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 a, it's a super cool idea. You know, it's, it's, and it's funny because I didn't think about it until sitting right here. But it makes sense because we went to the, the rugby game and everybody together, like, we, look, team sports in America are a big deal. I've never seen anything like that before. But it makes sense, if that's the thought of we're going to come together as a country and support this one thing, then it's, it's going to be the same with the cosplayers. So that's, maybe that's just in their DNA then. Maybe that's it's not the it's, it's, it's super cool. cool. But that's, that's the cool thing about this content. Y'all y'all are coming just to be with other people. You know, that's the coolest thing. Like, you know, I don't know what the normal people are doing today, but all the cool people are here. Like, I don't know what normal people do. I do know, first of all, I do want to point out, how many of y'all went and watched the rugby game to see all the cosplayers in their green jerseys? <laughs> For real, they ain't never played on the team. I saw some guys in jerseys that they definitely don't make a 3XL jersey for folks on this team. But they're cosplayers. And, you, and they just don't think about it that way. You know, and that's the thing. Like, I remember I had a friend of mine come see uh, the, you know, come see the Grand Championship of Cosplay in Chicago, and he, he's a, a guy that I've known for a couple years, and he showed up in a Cubs baseball jersey, Cubs sweatpants, and a Cubs hat, and everybody's walking around cosplay, and he said, uh, look at all these nerds. 
And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize you played for the Cubs. You're a nerd. So, I mean, we all have our thing, you know? And ours just happens to be, you know, cooler and more intellectual than the other stuff. Dressing right. up and playing pretend. Right. Well, in all honesty, and that's the one thing, when someone says to me, oh, you dress up? I'm like, have you watched Lord of the Rings? Have you watched Harry Potter? What do you think they do? They weren't born like that. Yeah, but, but here's but but to take it one step further, they're not wearing those costumes for an entire day walking around. Exactly. They're wearing it to walk the set and then back to the trailer, maybe yeah. three, four hours a day. Y'all are in it all day long. True, so, true. And again, the other thing they don't realize too is the you know it's a little different now. Uh, you know, I've, I've built you know I've, we haven't talked about this. I actually built a lot of props for for stuff. So we have the 10 foot rule, which is from 10 feet away, it looks amazing. And until just recently with HGTV, most stuff made for movies was the 10 foot rule. Like when you get really close, you realize, oh, that doesn't look good at all. You can't do that in cosplay, because people are going to get right up on you. I mean, we've been trying to make that connectivity at the moment where cosplay is so, like, a lot closer than most people think to the movie space. So we've been taking cosplayers, training them up, and uh, putting them in uh, the correct ecosystem to get themselves into the production space. And uh, I think that is the next point for cosplay. And also, you, have to, you, you really have to remember that, like you said before, the cosplayers are wearing their armors, wearing their costumes for hours on end. So you don't see these actors doing that because they, they don't make costumes. Look, for instance, one of the know a secret, I'm going to tell you all the secret, I'm going to tell anybody I told you this. How many of you watched The Mandalorian? You like the Mandalorian? Do you know how, how many times Pedro Pascal's actually been in the Mandalorian armor? Once. For that scene where he took his helmet off. The rest of the time it's John Wayne's grandson and another gentleman. There's two other guys that are actually the Mandalorian. Pedro is very rarely in the suit. Mainly just does the voiceover. He does have a nice mustache though. I mean, you know. He's, look, if you need to get a child across the country in dangerous situations, Pedro Pascal is your man. He will get your on. child to safety. <laughs> you know, wrong. That's the one. Thing. No, I mean, like you know, or if you want to hang out with Nicolas Cage, you can do that too. So, so true, true. Any guys have any questions for these guys that are up here? Yeah. So I don't have anybody with a microphone, so you just have to yell. Go ahead, right there, the Supergirl. You're the only one raising your hand. I mean, you're looking around like I'm not talking. I'm looking right at you. I'm like, looking in your face, and you're just like, oh. You're good, you're good. What's your question? Okay, so on Saturday, you were Spider-Man. The suit that you wore, what was your favorite suit? So that suit is um, a mix of a few things. So it's Task 16 resin for the, um, the major parts that stick out on the armor base. For the rest of it, it's called screen printing. Basically, it's where you get a certain fabric, like a lycra, or a, what's the, I think it's a poly, um, yeah, it's, it's a type of scuba. Yeah, it's a scuba, it's a scuba um, fabric, and they uh, personalize it, so there's like, they print on top of it, um, it it's absolutely fantastic. So you know when you've got like, um, you know, uh, what's this way, okay, you know tie-dye, right, and uh, when you also, um, what's the one you got? I love how he keeps asking me, and English is not my first language. I'm so sorry, I don't, I'm only like, uh, I'll try and explain it, but uh, I'm not so good at like the... Um, Technical terms. Okay, well, <laughs> um, okay, so you get the sticky thing, and then you normally get like the, the piece of wood that you push over the top, right? They've got a machine which basically does that automatically, so it feeds the fabric through it, and then prints like um, thousands and thousands of, it could be any, any uh, shape you're looking for, so you could have diamonds, dots, crystals, makes no difference and uh, you can print that onto a fabric and that's how you get that 3D effect. But, Just to uh, give a quick insight as well, they were made by the team that we have in France called Parallel Studios. So if you want to look them up, they also do personalized fabrics. It is a little expensive, I'm going to be honest, but it's a very, very neat fabric. But um, those suits are also at the level of um, movie suits. So it's kind of like, it's the same kind of budget that throw a model in. So it's, um, yeah, hope that helps. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to ask you an interesting question, just because I'm curious, and I know y'all are crazy cosplayers and crazy into props. What's the most expensive thing you've bought to build a costume? 
the most amount of money you spent, and what was it? I think that might be the Marvel one, actually. So, not for me. I don't. Okay, so I mean, what was yours? The Marvel snap suit that I was wearing was um, like fifteen thousand euros. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, about fifteen thousand euros. Hang on. Um, okay, okay. <laughs> Ninety-four thousand rand. That's um, Spider-Man suits. They're kind of expensive. But yeah, that's not the most expensive. I mean, we've done gigs where you had to make costumes, like for example, oh, no, Fire, right? Like, more like pop, I think costumes. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, when we've done costumes, if I look at, for example, Fire, who I did for Masters in Monaco, um, material-wise alone, and that's without counting in all the hours. Uh, and everything else that was alone with materials around like 3k. If then you put all the hours in, you're looking at 20 to 30k this euros. Is, this is one of the things that a lot of people don't realize about the cosplay and like when you get to that like professional standard, the campaign you run, uh, like, they, they have like a range of budgets and um, a lot of people go, you know what, I'm going to go and get a costume for a thousand dollars or like two thousand dollars, but a lot of these companies are paying hundreds of thousands of USD um, for the campaign and costume. It's kind of a really big space. <laughs> Did you say what yours was? How was it? Around the 30, 40 K. Well, what was it? Uh, five from League of Legends. Alright, cool. <laughs> you want to ride? Uh... You look really cool as Fi, I promise. I can put you in the costume. What were you asking? <laughs> were you bugging me about mine? Hang on, I, I, I made the mistake of switching it from Rand to Euro. It's actually 99... 99,000... 99,000 Rand is how much you spent. Yeah, it was not cheap. <laughs> it was not cheap. But it was for a competition, so I wanted to put all my effort in. I didn't get that paid out because I did that for myself. So that's also when you see these people on stage, just know that part of the materials is only part of the price that they're paying. And there's the whole side of it of hours that they put in. When someone says, oh, I put like 500 hours in that, imagine what that translates to in like money when you get paid per hour. So. I've got a bit of a question for you. Hey, I, I have my dollar. I'm gonna, I'm oh, gonna tell see. you. Okay. All right. The most money. So I built a prop, and this is what they paid for it. It was 175 thousand American dollars. Wow. So that is. I'm trying to do the more. One, two, three, one, two. Did you go to three go? million two hundred thousand rand. What car was this? I built a DeLorean time machine. Nice. I mean, I would pay that. I would pay that. I mean, I, I built eight of them, but... Okay, yeah, right. Bit of a question. Yeah, what cosplay would you do if you could do anything? So, I... It's so funny. Uh, it's it, like, most people don't believe me when I say this. Uh, I'm a really shy person. What? No, really. So, but here, here's the thing, though. Like, I realize that... In my normal job, I'm a DJ. I stand behind the table. And the reason I did that is because when I was at a party of kids, I didn't know how to how to talk to people. I had a little bit of autism, and so I just I don't I don't connect right. So I was like, well, if I play the music, then nobody can pick on me, and if I get really good at it, then people will really like me. And so my first year at Comic Con South Africa, I, I DJ just out in the out in the, in the foyer. It was great. It was fun. But everybody was so wonderful, and everybody came up and was nice. So the next year, they brought me inside on the stage, and I played music for uh, stand-up comedian. His name was Mo. Do you remember Mo from? He, he, and he hosted. And uh, I would do the little warm-up in between and play games because I, I feel like these are my people. Like we're the same. Like we're all a little, little off. We're all a little weird because we're here. I talked about the normal people. Like I'm not an old person. But. Oh, it was boring. No, but we're like, and that's it. So I just, I feel comfortable with everyone in this room because they're just like me. Like, it's true. But I, I feel like, uh, but so in wearing a costume, it would draw too much attention to me. It would make me uncomfortable. But you could also wear a costume where your face is not visible, and then they wouldn't know who you are, like Spider-Man. Why would you want to hide that beautiful face? <laughs> Well, I'd like to hide it, because right now, so I've been happily married now for three years and about 35 pounds. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So I have to diet when I get home, so, because I do have a job at Disney where I, so believe it or not, I have, technically I have cosplay. 
So at Walt Disney World, uh, again, I've worked at Walt Disney World since I was 19. Uh, so I cosplayed as uh, Tigger for a couple of years. And uh, how, how it works, and you know, it's funny I can talk about this because I technically don't work there anymore. Uh, the, the costume characters that you see, the, the furries, we don't like to call them that, but that's what they are. That's what they are. Um, you're, it's all based on how tall you are. So if you're five foot zero to five foot two, you're mouse height. So you're you're all Mickey Mouse height characters. So is that how tall are you? 191 centimeters. I think that's uh, six foot three. So six foot three, you'd be tall characters. Like you'd be the Beast. You'd be Goofy. You'd be Goofy. That's you, man. You're Goofy on your own already. <laughs> oh, so I was. I was. I'm. 5, 11, 6 foot, so I was Tigger, Eeyore, Sheriff of Nottingham. I love you know. Eeyore. Eeyore, like, oh no way, when I was a kid, you must be that. And I like, I, I, Look, I the, remember so, the coolest Eeyore. thing of the, cool, the coolest thing about the Eeyore costume is it was very baggy. And he had, he didn't have any fingers, so what you could do is, because it's very hot and humid in Florida, so you'd be sweating. But what you could do with Eeyore is you could take and hold your hand then you can pull your other hand out of the arm and wipe your face off and put your arm back in there. You could also, because the nose was really deep, I put a little clock in it so I knew what time it was, but you could also put like a bag of potato chips and so like you could reach up in there and eat some chips and put your arm back in there. I'm just picturing like a kid in front of you and you're just, they're like, what's he all doing? You yeah. And it's funny because like I know some cosplayers some of them build fans into the suits and stuff, but what I learned is eventually you take those fans out because they just add weight. And they're usually unreliable, they don't really help that much. I think it's the equivalent of having pockets in cosplay, because how many of us actually think about making pockets in our cosplays? That is actually so true. I can't remember the last costume that I actually had pockets in. I can only use um, your bag. <laughs> Every bag. I mean, speaking of pockets, we have some ladies here. Do you all do the same thing here in South Africa where your pockets don't actually fit anything? Yes! That's something that my wife talks about. Like she's got blue jeans and she's got like pockets and they are you about to show me that it doesn't fit even fit a phone in it? Yeah. See there you go. I put it in my back pocket. pocket. Alright, so you wanna see what you want you wanna know the real reason I wear these jackets? It's pockets. Do you know how many I have? How many pockets do you think I have in this jacket? Four. Oh, you, think I, you think I only have four? All right, here we go. We got one. There's candy in this one. There's uh, two right here. I got uh, my room key and the golf cart key there. There's four. There's one up here. I got one inside. Five right here is my uh, badge. I got this little one. I don't know what goes in here. That's six. Uh, none on that side. I got seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven pockets. Elliot, can you make my next cosplay, please? I sure. don't have any pockets. I don't, I don't know what I'll make, but... If we... So, no, so I did cosplay. So, I forgot. I was, uh, I was DJ Lobot. So I was Lobot from Empire Strikes Back. And what was cool is, they actually got us the screen use headpiece that was worn in the film. So I got to wear the piece from the movie on my head, and it was miserable. Honestly, I'm just jealous because you have golf cart keys. Well, I love like, we didn't get any golf cart keys. Oh, I stole the golf cart. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah. So, look, 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 look. There's... so again, I've been doing this convention now. Every I've done every single one, and there are very few liberties that I take. And so every year I try to like one up the things I can get away with. And this year it was I'm just gonna take a golf cart. And so uh, the funny thing is, is I went out, like, I have this key, and I've learned that the key works in pretty much every golf cart. So what happens is if I walk out there and my golf cart isn't there, I just take whichever one is there. So, oh, that's why we lost the golf cart. Yeah, exactly. It was you. <laughs> a golf cart so I just walked out and was like, hey, there's a, one golf cart here. All right, ride back. Here we go. Dude, you just need to go around and just, like, Reverse everybody's golf So now the problem, the, the, the mistake that I keep making is I keep driving on the wrong side of the road because the steering wheel is where it's supposed to be, but it's the wrong side of the road. <laughs> but so you've already worn a cosplay, so you know what it's like. Can you imagine doing that like on stage, interacting, and then for like no, that, look, that's why I'm such a fan of cosplay. It's why I make sure to make the big deal about the we clap and stop for the first person as we do the second person. Like, I know how scary it is to be on stage in normal clothes, let alone with something that you just spent 
You know, like the average number of hours that I read today was 500 hours. Everybody, 500 is crazy. That was the right? hour, 500, 400, like months, and, and you're like, it just, I, I just want everybody to respect all the time and effort and work that goes into it. And the great thing is, is for the most part, like, everyone is so much more respectful here than they are in other countries. It's, it's so true. Everybody like, everywhere so you go in the States, there's a sign that's cosplay is not consent. You know, make sure to ask pictures. You know, so it's just it's it's just such a different community here. It reminds me, there's a uh, there's a, a great meme or picture that I've seen, and it's related to my field, and it's a picture of a stairway, and it's all people on the stairway reaching down to help people up the stairs, and it's like you know DJs in other countries, and then in America it's the same stairwell, and it's people kicking people down the stairs, and you know it's definitely that's kind of how it feels like here with cosplay like the fact that everybody was just there everyone was happy that she's going to represent them because they know she's going to win i think it's when people come together and they they have the goal and they go i want my country to do well in this and you see how hard somebody's tried and um you know what they put into it and it's when they're well, on let's, the stages. but let's let's be honest for a minute here in front of these people and i'll say it the person who wins uh, from from America, they're not representing America. They're representing themselves. Yeah. 100%. They're not representing the country. They're like, hey, I won as me, not I won for my country. You know, and that's you know, and it's and it's weird because you know, there's really only two or three countries because how weird cosplay has gotten in the United States. Not as many countries are sending people to compete anymore because it's changing. You know, there was a time a couple years ago where we really pushed really hard to be like, hey, we need to have a needle po point category. Because what was happening in the beginning, I've been judging cosplay since the 2000s. What happened in the beginning is, whoever had the biggest costume won. Like, that was it. Like, 10 years ago, the bumblebee that you saw walking around, that's who would've won. Even if you walk, you know, from 10 feet away, and I didn't really walk close, from 10 feet away, bumblebee looked great. You know, if I get up close, maybe it's all, you know, cardboard and it's not quite as polished. I don't know, I didn't get, get a, a real chance to look, so I'm not calling them out. Uh, he's from South Africa, so it's probably built out of an actual car. <laughs> so true. But, but that was what happened. And, and, and so as, as organizers, we were like, okay, cool, so let's get other cosplayers to judge. Let's talk to cosplayers and find out how we can make this better. And that's how we came up with the category system. And then a lot of countries like to do the performance aspect. Well, we can't do that if it's against the law. Like, if you're dressed as Iron Man and you're on stage pretending to be Iron Man with music and sound effects from Iron Man, it's copyright infringement. Uh, yeah, we've actually seen this. No, no, yeah, this you, you get sued and you, they, you know, the studios can send you a cease and desist and destroy. Like, they will tell you that you have to destroy your cosplay. So we're like, cool, we got to take that out of it. Well, we still want them to embody the character. We're just not going to do it with music so that they put on little vignettes. And that upsets some people. But on the flip side too, you know, not all cosplayers want to perform. They just want to build an amazing costume and show it off. They don't want, you know, and so it's, it was a real difficult time when we're like, do we make performance part of this? And we're like, it's kind of unfair. Because again, you've got people that are amazing needlepoint and amazing, you know, armor. But they, they, they're not, they have no rhythm. You know, and they, they just, you know, that's not their thing. So we took that out. And then, you know, figuring out what the other categories are. And then it's funny to watch because everything goes in cycles. For the longest time, armor category. That won every single time. And then all of a sudden, this woman came out of France that was ridiculous. She did this Cinderella dress. And she won. And it was such intricate needlework and detail. And everybody's like, oh, wait, that's harder. And so now what's happening is everybody's, and the only reason the girl, the, the person who won last year was she did this technique that had never been done before. And what was it? Because I've been uh, doing it. It was using like plastic tools to weather and create materials that had never been. So it was like actual animal skins that were treated and dyed in the sun. And in my head, I'm like, that's how they make normal clothes in South Africa. They just didn't think to do that. Like, you know, I've seen some amazing stuff. So just it's, we try to keep it as someone that's on the committee to make sure that we're, that, that we're legitimately looking for the best craftsperson.
Well, that's the thing, and that's the beauty of cosplay in general, is the fact that because you have these people coming in with the uh, sewing work and the needlework, now you have such a varied judge panel that they will fight each other. We had war, yeah. war in, the, in the judge room, and in a good way, like, we agreed, of course, but obviously you're going to fight for what you think, deserves higher grades and that is really nice to see because like you said the armor would always win and it's not fair because no. needlework is very hard too. Correct and, that, and that's why we always made sure and we try to make sure now we're like okay so when it comes to judges and you saw today you had cosplayers you had people that didn't know a damn thing about cosplay because that's important too you want people that don't know anything you know those are the people that were voting for the big costumes because they don't realize that that's not necessarily hard it's just like oh wow it's huge you know, and then you know, so you got to pick people from each discipline to make sure that you get a fair judging. So, and so it's really nice to see how many judges we have here, and we had uh, some good pre-judging. So, look, it's been a fantastic time talking to you guys. We got to get you off to your next thing. Uh, don't worry, I have a golf cart, uh, and it's actually the last time you're going to see me because I got to head to the airport and head back to the United States. But uh, thank you guys both. Uh, I really appreciate your time together. And, uh, we're going to work together in the future. And thank you all for letting me to continue to be a part of this here in South Africa. Like, legit, uh, half of these guests I've convinced to come here, and I'm going to keep convincing guests to come. Uh, they're friends of mine. I love you all. Wait, wait, and, uh, wait. Yeah. Let's just give a really big round of applause to the no, best dancers. No, no, no. no, no, again, this will be the largest Comic Con in the world. I, I, I guarantee you. And just keep doing what you're doing. Keep coming. Support. All these people out here and all these moves. Make some noise for all these people that paid to be here to sell you stuff. And our AB team that's here putting on a great show, moving all these weird ass chairs we've had. These are the coolest chairs. They're I'm not. So fun. They're very. I am. Maybe it's because I'm old. I would. But you. Hey. Thank you so much. You guys have an amazing day.